go for it. Morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Well? Nice. One person is happy. Tremendous. Nice work, guy. Um, thank you so much for having me here. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, and what I would like to talk to you guys about is the concept of the thank you economy, which is uh, a book I wrote. just want to make sure this is not being single. Which is a book I wrote uh, back in March, and it's pretty much where I live and what I think about when it comes to business. I'm going to assume that the far majority of you guys actually have no idea who I am. As a matter of fact, if you do not know who I am, please raise your hand. That hurt. Thank you. That's what I figured. And actually is what makes it exciting for me because uh, most of you don't have context for me, which is what I'm going to be talking about in my talk. So I will give you a little bit of context about my backstory to give you a feel of how I got here and how I view the business world. I was born in Belarus in the former Soviet Union and uh, immigrated to the U.S. when I was three years old. Um, it was very tough living. It was very immigrant lifestyle. I lived with eight family members in a studio apartment slightly bigger than the table that I'm sitting at. It was very, very difficult. One of the side jobs that my father got was to be a stock boy in a liquor store in New Jersey. So he commuted from Queens to New Jersey every day for an hour and a half for two bucks an hour. So as you can imagine, it was a very tough beginning. The streets were far from paved with gold in the U.S. and it was a struggle. Eventually, my father became the manager of that store, and we moved to New Jersey. That's where my entrepreneurial business career started. I had eight lemonade stands when I was five years old and used to ride my bicycle around town and pick up my cash. When I was 12, I started my first real business. Hey, what's up, everybody up there? Nice. When I was 12, I started my first business, which was a baseball card business, and I was making $2,000 a weekend selling baseball cards in the malls of New Jersey. So that was a great living. I was making lots of money. Things were great. And then when I was 14, my father ruined my life and dragged me into the family business. At this point, he owned a small store in Springfield, New Jersey, liquor store, shoppers discount liquors, and he dragged me to work there. So I went from making $2,000 a weekend selling baseball cards and doing what I loved to making $2 an hour bagging ice in the basement of my dad's store for 10 hours a day. Very obviously, I hated my family business. For the next two years, I had to be in the basement bagging ice and it kind of sucked. And then when I was 16, I was finally allowed upstairs. When I was upstairs, something interesting happened to me on one specific day. Every person came in and asked for the same exact wine. The Wine Spectator, which is America's top wine publication, had named a wine of the year, a Cabernet from Napa Valley. Everybody came in asking for it. We had sold out of it. Finally, I was getting frustrated with so many people coming in, asking for it, and leaving. I decided to take a back order. We didn't have a back order system in our store, but I didn't really care because I was going to school on Monday anyway and didn't have to deal with it. So next person comes in. I take a back order. I go, how much wine would you like? A couple bottles? He goes, I'll take six cases. I said, oh shit, an alcoholic. I said, six cases? Are you having a party? He said, no, no, no. I collect wine. And that was it for me. Because I collected sports cards and memorabilia, I finally had an attachment to my family business and saw that people collected wine the way I collected cards. This pretty much led to the reason that I'm standing here. I decided that I wanted to build the largest wine company in the world. At that point in 1993 too, I thought that I would open up 100 stores in America and that would be my kind of story. In 1995, when I was in college, my life took a different turn. My friend called me and said, hey Gary, you have to come in here and see this thing. We can get girls on this thing. So I came in and he went on, coo -coo that's kind of what it sounded like back then. And he showed me the internet and he started talking to girls and in about two minutes I said, I can sell things on this thing. 
that kind of shifted my world and I decided that I wanted to launch a website for my family business. And in 1996, I launched winelibrary.com. And from 1998, when I took over operations until 2005, in that seven year window, I grew the business from a three, three and a half million dollar business to a 60 million dollar business using pretty traditional marketing tactics. Direct mail, billboards, radio, television. <laughs> traditional things like Google AdWords and banner ads and email services. I built the business marketing. I'm a marketing guy. I stand here before you and I'm going to talk to you about social media now as somebody who loves social media for one reason. Because social media sells shit. Period. I am not in the interest of social media because I'm techie. I don't care about gadgets. I don't care about this. I don't care about guys, you know, Amazon Fire, Kindle. I'm not romanced by technology at all. I did not grow up techie. I did not have a computer until I was 20 years old. So when I talk to the companies that I now consult for, after I started winelibrary.com and grew it to that size in 2005, I noticed the internet was changing. And I noticed YouTube had just come out. And that was interesting to me. 